नमस्कार व्यूअर्स हेलो एंड वेलकम टू सनसेट टीवी आई एम टीना झा योर वाचिंग पर्सपेक्टिव चाइना स्टैंड्स फर्मली अगेंस्ट ऑल फॉर्म्स ऑफ हेजमोनिज्म एंड पावर पॉलिटिक्स सेड प्रेसिडेंट शी जिनपिंग एट द ओपनिंग सेशन ऑफ द 20th नेशनल कांग्रेस ऑफ द कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी ऑफ चाइना द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट इवेंट इन चाइनाज पॉलिटिकल कैलेंडर द वंस इन अ 5 ईयर कांग्रेस कन्वीन्ड ऑन 16th अक्टूबर एंड विल गो ऑन टिल द 22nd ऑफ दिस मंथ अराउंड 2300 डेलीगेट्स फ्रॉम अक्रॉस चाइना हैव गैदर्ड एट बीजिंग्स ग्रेट हॉल ऑफ द पीपल for the week long event to appoint the ccp's top leadership and also approve the country's road map for the next 5 years president shi who is also the party's general secretary the chairman of the ccp central military commission as well delivered a wide ranging speech talking about security modernization of military also covid-19 unilateralism and most importantly taiwan each of these significant aspects china's policy directions on its domestic as well as international issues what they mean for the region and the world at large all of this and much more in this edition of perspective today with three very distinguished panelists who are joining us please to welcome professor shrikant kondapalli center for east asian studies school of international studies jnu former ambassador suresh k goel and uh, mr liu roja his associate professor in international studies flame university pune thank you gentlemen for joining us on the program today uh Professor Kondapalli let me begin the program today with you before we you know begin discussing the different aspects of president xi jinping speech help us and our viewers understand why is this congress so significant why is it different from the typical congress that happens every 5 years i think this congress is very important because there was a lot of speculation about president xi jinping's third term uh, since the march 2018 national people's congress resolution on extending the president's uh, tenure uh, this is about general secretary of the party uh, although there are no limits to this position yet deng xiaoping previously had put up a norm for two term period so uh, uh, 68 years as the uh, limit for the politburo standing committee members uh, since uh, there is a lot of speculation and reports about the third term for xi jinping in this congress so that is very significant uh partly because he had initiated uh, several iconic projects like uh, china dream china rejuvenation 2049 socialist modernization which has been preponed for 2035 uh, scenarios and also most important he said in the 19 party congress before in 2017 about building a world class military uh, in order to fulfill the china dream china rejuvenation Uh, and the uh, first centennial has been celebrated of the communist party in 2021 last year uh, also coinciding with which with what they call as well of society well of society construction uh, roughly the equivalent of per capita income of the european countries although they have not been able to reach that level uh, and uh, the second centennial in 2049 which was invoked in the yesterday's speech uh, on the uh, on the socialist modernization so these are significant aspects of the 20th party congress uh, what is of course uh, the context is uh, uh, president xi also mentioned in the report about the momentous developments happening uh, all across and also providing strategic opportunities for china in this regard uh, as you know uh, the world has been shut down for the past two and a half years with the covid 19 that originated in wuhan uh, in uh, october 2019 and spread across killing roughly about 6.5 million people uh, and uh, all across the world uh, and nearly uh, 5 lakh people in india uh, and that suggests that the uh, the supply chain um, uh, related problems are uh, uppermost and that created a void in trade global trade and global economic growth rates everyone's growth rates have fallen uh, uh, while of course india this year is growing at around 8% china is growing likely at 2.4% according to world bank figures so this is also a momentous development in the sense that there is uh, a global uh, happening on this second of course is the ukrainian war Uh, which created in food fuel fertilizer prices increase uh, again affecting the global growth rates uh, substantially uh, and why is it that this is a, a strategic opportunity for china 
they think that the Americans are in decline, and so they want to uh, occupy the center stage, as Xi Jinping mentioned in the previous Party Congress report. So uh, if that is the ambition of China, uh, then we have to see also what would be the position of India in this uh, regional certainly, and global certainly. order. Certainly. So we'll discuss and, and what the implications will be. We'll discuss what the implications will be on India, the region and the uh, world as well. And for that, I'll go to the ambassador. But uh, before that, uh, Professor Roger, let me come to you. Since uh, Professor Kondopoli spoke about Chinese ambition, uh, let me get your perspective on uh, what really is the agenda, what are some of the most significant aspects that uh, President Xi Jinping spoke about in his speech, how different was it uh, from 2017 in terms of the areas that he uh, put his thrust upon? I think this uh, 20th Party Congress in this year actually has been a very monumental thing, not only in the history of the CCP, but also in the history of China and it will have a broader impact to the world. Because if you remember in 2000, uh, 10 years before, uh, um, in, the 20, uh, in the 18th uh, Party's Congress of CCP, when Xi Jinping just rose to power, he was actually viewed as the hopefuls for democratization of China. Even a lot of uh, China hands in the US or in the Western world will had high hope on him. Uh, because they thought that Xi Jinping can be a, a leader to, you know, for China to to lead China to uh, further openness uh, to um, to the world. Um, however, uh, after five years, well, these things are not happening because in 2013 he just announced the BRI, the Bill and Road Initiative, and after two years they come up with the detailed guidelines uh, for this um, ambitious geopolitical. Uh, project to be launched. And in 2017, in the 19th Party's Congress, well, uh, Xi Jinping uh, uh, smoothly uh, transitioned in his uh, second term. But at the same time, Donald Trump became the president of the United States and the US-China wars curtain was raised. And that was the year that uh, the two giants on, uh, across the Pacific Ocean entered officially into a, comp a competition uh, relationship. So after those five years, um, well, things are getting worse because in 2018, well, everybody knows that Xi Jinping started to cancel the term limit so that, well, after uh, the, the 19th Party Congress, he will <coughs> still stay in the position as the president of China for okay. next five years. And most importantly, he will still grasp the party power. Okay. So uh, this two, uh, 20th Party's Congress, although a lot of people were guessing before it happens that Xi Jinping may uh, relinquish or give up part or uh, the full uh, capacity of its power to step down or anything, but it is not happening. So we can see that Xi Jinping in this party's Congress, well, he secure his power. Right. That's the first thing. So secondly, he will actually put security, the national security, the political security, or his power security to be the priority in the Chinese political agenda for the coming five years. And this can be very, um, create a lot of impacts for the uh, mm -hmm. international politics for the countries surrounding China. Okay. Well, first is Taiwan, because um, if you notice in 2024, two years after Taiwan is going to have another presidential election. So if the Pan Green or the pro-independence uh, DPP again becomes or grabs the presidency, this will in, uh, definitely create some tension between Taiwan and China. And at the same time, the US is also seeing its uh, power transition in the uh, next presidential election. If uh, the Republicans or you know even hardliners in the Republican Party such as Donald Trump and his factions become the president again, this will also create uh, the likelihood that um, the U.S.-China relationship will worsen. Certainly. And so we'll come, that we'll, will we'll come back to the U.S.-China very... relations in just a bit, uh, Professor Roger. But before that, because you mentioned uh, immediate neighbors and India happens to be just the next door neighbor, uh, uh, there have been turbulence in our relationships under President Xi Jinping's term. So, Ambassador, it looks like, you know, and strong indications that an unprecedented third term, maybe a fourth one as well in the times to come as well for President Xi Jinping. But what does it mean for India? Uh, absolutely, you know, uh, I think uh, uh, 
the way I look at this current uh, go- ongoing Congress is that number one, it is an opportunity, and I think the first and the foremost priority for Xi Jinping will be to consolidate his control over the party. A third term, fourth term, they uh, really simply become numbers. But the fact is that uh, Xi Jinping is ensuring through this party session that with the changes in the Standing Committee, Politburo Standing Committee, it is full of the people who will support his agenda and who will support all of them, the remaining six, will be his friend, his loyal, his loyals, and not the people who can have who can oppose him even marginally. So that is number one, control. Number two, I do detect that there is a huge emphasis on a kind of, if I may use the word, reversal of China from a reformist agenda to going back to the policy of the phrase they keep on using, the Chinese communism with, sorry, uh, socialism with Chinese characteristics. Now, that's a traditional phrase. China has always used it. But the number of times this has been now referred to in the speech clearly indicates to me that socialism has become a priority for them rather than just the economic reforms. In fact, in some places, the speech also refers to the balances, creeping uh, uh, imbalances uh, in the economy, unhappiness among certain sections of people. So clearly there is an indication that China may not, uh, which was evident even in terms of Alibaba and the other uh, uh, tech companies, that China may actually be going on the path to really, uh, you know, greater equality rather than uh, Tang Xiaoping's model of spurting the growth by letting the rich be- become richer, richer first. So there is a reversal of Tang Xiaoping's policies during this party congress. Okay. Coming to the issues of the international environment, there is, as Mr. Liu said, there's a huge <clears> emphasis <throat> on security of the Chinese nation. Uh, it talks about Taiwan. Uh, Hong Kong is a kind of a matter of course that they have been able to resolve the problem in Hong Kong by making changes in the law, et cetera, et cetera. And by b- making the patriots govern Hong Kong, by making those changes in Hong Kong. And therefore, they seem to be more reassured about Hong Kong. But there is a kind of feeling of anxiety about Taiwan. <laughs> when they talk about Taiwan, the development of Taiwan, international environment, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there is a feeling that they might, uh, and when they talk about uh, not excluding the military option, they have never excluded the military option. But saying it again, and not saying that peace, uh, while they will prefer the peaceful reunification, but they will use military if necessary. I think there is a sense of rush and kind of an anxiety in the minds of at least Xi Jinping to hasten and to expedite the reunification, so to say, of Taiwan with uh, China, mainland China. Neighboring areas, uh, I think when they talk about stability, when they talk about the environment in the region, when they talk about, uh, I think those are the kind of phrases they would use for the neighborhood in any case. I do not detect in the speech any particular emphasis or any particular uh, reason to worry about the security in the area. Uh, This is my own reading. Uh, Of course, as far as the remaining disputes are concerned, they will uh, go to all possible means. But But, the speech itself, to my mind, As you said, and as uh, Professor Roger was saying, the fact that the trust has been laid on security implications of all kinds. A a Reuters report says that, you know, in the full work report, President Xi has used the term security or safety at least 89 times, which is up from 55 times in uh, 2017. And uh, the use of the word reform has come down from 68 to 48. So clearly, I mean, uh, you know, Professor Kondrapalli, the shift has been from uh, economic growth now to security. And particularly, if you look at the terms like national rejuvenation, the thrust on modernization to military, his statement against unilateralism, the exclusive group of countries against some particular countries, that's what he said. How do you interpret all of this and how do you look at the security implications for the region, particularly for the immediate neighbors? 
Uh, exactly, Tina. I think there is, uh, unlike in the previous Congress reports, uh, this one has a lot of uh, emphasis on the security aspects uh, and uh, the fact that uh, the, uh, yeah, so it has basically two major implications for India if there is so much of emphasis. One is in terms of the Galwan and post-Galwan situation. Uh, so Xi Jinping is trying to convey that the uh, the border security, etc., will be tightened up. There will not, will not be any major leeway. Uh, as you know, last uh, February, Raksha Mantri suggested that in all friction points, there will be uh, de-escalation and disengagement process. But we have not seen that happening even today after 16 core commanders meeting. So this is one implication of the security. Second, uh, uh, by implying on the security uh, and on the PLA modernization and suggesting to building a world-class military, China is also sending a signal that uh, Galwan issue will not be resolved anytime quickly. Uh, and the fact that uh, Chief Apao, who participated in Galwan, was present in the Congress uh, as a invitee, suggests that they want to reproduce those images of Galwan. So uh, I, uh, uh, I think that you are right by suggesting security, military modernization, Two of these things are very prominent signaling to India. Uh, if I uh, have some time, I would also say uh, the zero COVID, dynamic zero COVID policy enunciation by Xi Jinping suggests that border controls will be stiff. Uh, and the 30,000 Indian students who are studying in Tianjin and Guangzhou will not get visas. They paid 20, 30 lakhs rupees so far. They're not going to get the visas, so which means that we are going to have a lot of problem. In addition to, of course, the businesses and the which fact are that you know, uh, Professor, on despite, the trade and despite other Despite all kinds of backlash to this uh, COVID policy, President Xi Jinping has been quite persistent. In fact, he seems to be suggesting that he will continue despite the economic uh, challenges, uh, the, the slowdown that his country is witnessing. Uh, Professor Roger, the fact uh, that President Xi Jinping emerges stronger his grip over not just the party but over military will only consolidate in the times to come. And you refer to the U.S.-China relations in the last one decade, particularly in the last couple of years, we've seen the U.S.-China relations have been at the lowest level. But as President Xi Jinping now, as we are discussing, as he emerges stronger towards an authoritarian regime, if we can say that, do you see a more assertive China, especially in terms of challenging uh, American dominance? I think of, I'm afraid that this is going to be the reality and more conflict that we are going to see for the coming years between U.S. and China. Because now the U.S. has, uh, according to the Chinese part and their evaluation, the U.S. has been weakening and this will be a long term trend. So that there is no better chance for China to overtake the U.S. in different aspects. And uh, another another um, uh, aspect that we have to look at is that, well, because just like um, uh, Professor Konavali and the ambassador have mentioned, uh, Xi Jinping has been under heavy challenge, especially in the following five years, we're going to see that he will be in a more fragile and uh, challenged position compared with before, because he has broken this 10 year uh, rule for each generation. So well, apparently we will see more and more factions and the uh, uh, groups in the party will try to challenge his, th uh, his uh, power in the following five years. So to avoid that, well, there is a divergence, uh, there is a diversionary war theory in international relations. If um, a, a domestic leader faces the pressure from the inside, he will try to diverge this kind of pressure to the outside. So to have war with neighboring countries or some unfinished um, issues with um, you know, such places like Taiwan and Hong Kong will be a very convenient um, political um, tool or political options that Xi Jinping will be taking. So I think in the future, it's very easy for us to see the conflict happening around China uh, with its neighbors. So we have to uh, take heed to that. Okay, Ambassador, coming to you. So uh, we are going to see more of an assertive China in the times to come, as Professor Rogers suggests. What then should be India's approach, considering the fact that uh, 
if we compare ourselves to the Chinese economy, we are still a smaller economy. There's no doubt we are, uh, you know, growing at a faster pace, but there's no comparison. Also, the fact that the Chinese PLA is much more stronger today in terms of our military. There are several aspects, uh, especially in terms of modernization in which we are uh, lagging behind. That's the true reality. And most importantly, China has for decades used our other neighbor, Pakistan, to offset India's clout in South Asia and also in the world. How dangerous is it going to be for us now with President Xi Jinping continuing to be the Chinese president? Before I go on to this path, I just want to read one small line from the speech given by Tang Xiaoping yesterday sure, sure. to illustrate that the, for China, the security concern is not India so much as its uh, South China Seas and the Indo-Pacific. Uh, he said, confronted with drastic challenges in the international landscape, especially external attempts, blackmail, contain, blockade, and exert maximum pressure on China. All these terms refer to the USA, not to India. India is inconvenient for China. And therefore, what was happening in Galwan is basically to tell India, uh, look, don't, don't try and challenge us. We can keep you in your place. Uh, the real threat for China is the USA and that too in Indo-Pacific and the West, uh, Western Pacific. Having said that, the right approach for India would be, it's an opportunity for India to basically balance the comprehensive national power. Militarily, we are on good wicket, but we, I don't think we, we can expect to become a threat to China anytime soon. Economically also, we are lagging far, far behind. But if we are able to maintain a reasonably economic GDP growth rate, if we can at least give or compare, uh, get closer to China, which may take many, many years, that will be something which will actually make China aware of India. Therefore, the path for us is economy, economy, economy. Militarily, we are okay, fine. If we can basically keep China at place and not become a threat to us, we are comfortable. Tina. Okay, Professor Kondopoli, so, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's an established fact that China's intentions are, of course, to become powerful, to challenge uh, the United States, which currently is uh, the leading economy. But the fact that it also faces external constraints, and particularly because its economy has been, glowing, uh, uh, has been slowing down, there are several other challenges as well in terms of uh, the supply chain disruption that you spoke about, the ongoing trade wars, etc. How do you think it's going to, uh, you know, uh, uh, go ahead with these external constraints that uh, pose a challenge to uh, the country? Uh, the uh, I think uh, uh, the mention about SNT and innovation uh, in as a specific item in the work report. Uh, suggest, uh, uh, of course, to the United States and dual circulation strategy of the 14th five-year plan that is under uh, implementation now. But it also poses a lot of competition for India in the coming years, uh, number one. Number two, uh, I would reiterate that the uh, uh, while India is not mentioned in the work report, uh, there are circumstantial issues which suggest that we need to uh, and given the Galwan background, uh, Galwan was not mentioned in 19 party Congress, but Galwan happened. Uh, so, and the PLA modernization is intensive and they are actually mobilized forces across the Galwan, uh, even as we speak. Uh, so this suggests that we need to keep uh, the contingency on the border intact in addition to the Indian Ocean region uh, where only recently, in August, the UN Wang 5 docked in Ambantota, despite Indian opposition. Uh, so I was just mentioning about that we need to keep in mind the security aspect of that. Yes. Uh, the other, of course, is there is a lot of other imp uh, impact uh, because we are in discussions uh, also in the BRICS, SEO and others. Uh, you have seen the Samarkand meeting on September 16th uh, last month. Uh, there is no headway uh, in the leaderships, uh, you know, coming together and discussing contentious issues. Uh, this also suggests that during crisis time, this could probably be a problematic area that we need to factor in. Uh, and also, the uh, the there is no positive uh, response in any of the work report suggestions so far. Uh, and that is an indication that the relations would be frosty for uh, uh, at least 
to the short term period in the uh, in the background of this work report certainly so this was about the implications on uh, you know on india on the other neighbors like taiwan with the united states as well but uh, uh, professor raj i'll come back to you for one last question and uh, something that has intrigued me is what happens to leek ha chiang we've seen you know uh, we've in fact read about things not being well between uh, president xi and premier leek ha chiang the fact that president xi being 69 gets a third term the premier two years younger to him at 67 is on his way out how do you look at premier lee khashyang's future well i would say this is some factional struggles because lee khashyang belongs to the uh, the chinese communist youth corp which is a very strong you know faction within the chinese communist party but now they have a uh, heir political heir which is lee chang who is going to uh, take over his seat So I think um, the political discordance between Xi Jinping and Li Keqiang is because well, Xi Jinping focuses more on the political events and political security on his own. So he's more like Mao, but Li Keqiang is more like Deng Xiaoping, who is more like a technocrat who focuses more on the economic growth and all the technical details. So, well, politically speaking, you know, their per- political personalities are different. So they don't get along with each other, especially for the past few years when China has been entering in a you know struggling comp- 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 uh, competition you know relationship with the great powers. And Xi Jinping will be more likely to focus on the political aspect and front. Well, Li Keqiang still want to keep uh, the old open up uh, you know uh, economic growth. Um, strategy. So I think this this is the basic uh, reason that caused Absolutely. their and, uh, political he is, discordance. He is going to emerge in a much But, more stronger position when it comes to picking up leaders for top posts. That's something that we'll see in the weeks to come. Time allows me to take up only that much on the discussion today. Thank you once again to all three of you for joining us on this edition of Perspective, sharing your thoughts, your views with us and our viewers. Absolute pleasure to have you on the program today. So that's it from us on this edition of Perspective Today, viewers. Thank you for your time as well. I'll see you same time tomorrow now. Until then, you take good care of yourselves. Keep watching. Bye.